Captain William. He's the sacristan. He's in charge. And we're now going in. Not many people have had mass inside a cave, but we've arranged this for Legatus so that we can come in and have mass inside this cave. And look at that. How many of you have had mass in a cave before? Here, same place. To heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told to them about this child. All who heard it were amazed but what had been, by what had been told to them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. <clears throat> then the shepherds returned to this place, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our presence here today in Bethlehem turns our attention immediately to Christmas. And for many people in the United States at least, there is a standard Christmas tradition. Watching the classic movie, It's a Wonderful Life. We all remember it. Jimmy Stewart plays George Bailey, a man who has given up his dreams to help others, and whose imminent suicide on Christmas Eve brings about the intervention of his guardian angel, Clarence Oddbody. And Clarence shows George all of the lives that he has touched and how different life in his community of Bedford Falls would be if he had never been born. It's a story of sadness and despair, but also a story of hope and redemption. That story gives us a very modest insight into the significance of what happened here. The Gospel tells us when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds, shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. A few of the details of the gospel strike me immediately. First, that the shepherds were the first to learn this great news. And they go. And after they had seen what they had what had taken place, they immediately announced it to everyone. Interestingly, we call our bishops and our priests shepherds. Is it any wonder then that these menial workers would be used and would be the first of those sent to bring the good news to the world. Second, Jesus was born in a stable or a cave. Many commentaries say that he was lying in the food trough that the animals ate out of. And there is a significance here too, in that Jesus was placed in the container where the food would be given to the dirtiest and the lowliest of creatures the animals, the dirtiest, like the one I just held around my shoulders. <laughs> this was an image of what he would later do in giving himself to us, lowly and dirty creatures that we are, in his own body and blood in the Eucharist. It is in this that the greatest significance of the name of this little town is found in its literal meaning, as we learn today. This is the third point that I see. Bethlehem in Hebrew means house of bread. Among many ancient people, bread was a symbol 
of all the good things needed to sustain life, since it was the fundamental source of nourishment. That's why Jesus taught us to pray for our daily bread. We even speak of a person who earns a living for the family as the breadwinner. A house of bread is a home where a person can be fed and warmed and comforted and welcomed. Jesus chose bread, those simple elements of bread together with wine, to be the elements of the Holy Eucharist. Having taken human nature from his mother and been nourished at her breast, he wished to nourish us by transforming bread and wine into his own body and blood. The Eucharist sustains our spiritual lives. It helps us to grow more like the giver, Christ himself. It repairs the wounds of sin. It cleanses us of our dirtiness and gives joy to the hearts of all believers. But we know that as beautiful as this place is and as peaceful as it was, that we cannot remain here forever. Because in reality, what would happen is that the silent night, the holy night of Bethlehem, and the wood of the Christmas crib would soon be turned into the wood of the cross. Because Jesus, born here, would have to suffer and die and rise again for our salvation. Each time I hear these Christmas readings, I'm reminded of a true story of a young boy in the parish when I was first ordained. And each year, of course, as in most of our parishes, the children of the school would be chosen to play different parts in the parish Christmas pageant. Well, this particular year, one of the young boys in the fourth grade named Bobby was very enthusiastic about being chosen to be in the pageant until he was told that he was to be the innkeeper who turned away Mary and Joseph when they were looking for a place for the Christ child to be born. There was no way that this little boy, who was always taught to love everybody, wanted to play the part of the innkeeper, that mean old innkeeper. No matter how much he protested, however, and pleaded to be one of the shepherds instead, it didn't do any good. His grandmother even made him a little innkeeper costume. Well, the day of the pageant arrived, time for Bobby to get out of bed, but what did he do when they went to wake him? He pulled the covers over his head and said he was too sick to go to school. Let someone else be the innkeeper, he said, and he was too sick. The whole idea of being mean to Mary and Joseph and not giving them room in the inn was too much for him. Our Lord reminds us, out of the mouths of babes comes wisdom, and a little child will lead us. There's so much of the true meaning of Christmas in that story, and such a critical lesson for a world so steeped in hatred and selfishness and division, pride and arrogance, a world with so much contempt for human life. Yet how wise was young Bobby. His was not the wisdom of the world. His was the wisdom of the light that shines in the darkness, the wisdom of the child who was born to us, of whom Isaiah said, his dominion is peaceful. He confirms and sustains his kingdom by righteousness and justice. Bobby's story is really a story of hope, and his story is a story for all of us, too. Each one of us wishes to prepare a place in our hearts, in our lives, for the Christ child. Isn't that why we have all traveled so many thousands of miles on this pilgrimage? Because we wish to deepen our love for him and prepare an even better place for him in our lives and in our hearts. And God has given us all of the means needed to do it. How privileged we are to be in Bethlehem, this house of bread, where we are fed, and warmed, nourished, comforted, and welcomed by Jesus himself, born for us once again in the Eucharist we now celebrate, through which he allows us to share in the most wonderful life that we could ever imagine, 
both here and hereafter.